Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am back with another video for Arteza week. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use the Arteza real brush pens to quickly color a cute image for a card. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Over the past few days, I have been celebrating Arteza Week here on my YouTube channel. You may have already seen the videos where I created these projects. In my first video, I used their DIY canvas pad to create a little decor piece here with some emboss resist watercolor. And then on the right, I created a quick and easy set of watercolor cards with a little gold accent. I will have the playlist linked below if you want to see how I made these. For today's project, I'm going to be using the real brush pens again, and I'm going to create a quick and easy card where I will be coloring the cute little focal image with those real brush pens. I want to show you how quick and easy they are to use. I will be bringing in some other products, so I will make sure to let you know what those are when I introduce them. But if I do leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty! I started off my card today by die cutting a scrap of Bristol Smooth cardstock with a stitched rectangle die. I find that this paper, at least for me, works best with real brush pens. The stamp set that I'm going to be using today is from Lawn Fawn and it is called Thanks a Bushel. I also got out Versamark ink, my black detail embossing powder, and my embossing buddy. To ensure that my sentiment stamps as straight as is possible, I did pull in my Misty as well. I will be using two parts of a sentiment today for this card. The first one says thanks a bushel and the next part says for being a great teacher. I get those aligned as best as I can onto the cardstock piece and then when I think I have it in place, I pick it up with the door of my Misty. At this point, I use the etch grid in the lid of the Misty and I straighten the sentiment up just a little bit. Once I do have it ready to go, I ink it up with Versamark and then I stamp it onto my piece of cardstock. You'll also notice I use my embossing buddy because I will be pouring embossing powder over this and heat setting it. The embossing buddy just helps it so no powder sticks to where I don't want it to. Once that is heat set, I then get ready for my next stamp. The next stamp that I'm going to use is the basket full of apples. I place that above the sentiment leaving a little space between the two and then once again I use my embossing buddy, ink up the stamp and get that embossed with the black embossing powder. I do want to have one little apple sitting outside the basket on my card. So I brought in a small scrap of Bristol Smooth cardstock and I will be stamping one of the little apples from the stamp set. This gets inked up and embossed in the same way as the sentiment and the apple basket. Now it is time to do the coloring. I did pre-select some colors for my image and later as I am coloring it, I will tell you the numbers and the names. I'm also protecting my work surface with that Dollar Tree cutting mat and I went ahead and got out a scrap of paper to wipe my brush off with and my water brush just in case I need it. I'm going to be coloring my apples in a red and I will be using two different shades. The first one that I'm putting down kind of on the left side there and where there might be a shadow is Wine Red A182. Then I come in with red, which is A101, and blend that color out. You'll notice that once my brush gets a little full of that darker color, I bring it over to the scrap on the right to wipe that off. I continue the same way for all of the apples. While I finish this part, I did want to tell you about some special links in the description box below. 
First off, I have shopping links to the US and EU Arteza shops. So if you want to check out any of their products, I hope you'll click on those. These are affiliate links, so I will receive a small commission if you place an order, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. Also in the description box is a discount code for you. If you use it between now and September 22nd, you can save 10% on your order. If that does get extended past the 22nd, I will be sure to let you know. Once I had all of the apples colored, it was time to get those leaves colored in green. For my shading on the leaves, I'm using a line of seaweed green, which is A120, and I am blending that out with light green, which is A111. You'll notice I just kind of put a line on the bottom of the leaf where the shadow might be, and I blended that out to the top. For the basket, I brought in a couple browns. The first one I use on this for the shading is Walnut Brown A164. I blend that out with Tawny, which is A137. You'll notice that on the basket, I do do each section on its own as I am blending out that color. Finally, for the coloring, I need to make it look like my basket is actually setting on something, not just floating in thin air. So I brought in Dolphin Gray, A174, and just made a little shade below that. I put on some gray and then I blended it out with the water brush. Since my apple die cut is so little, I went ahead and brought in my Spellbinders Prism and the coordinating die set from Lawn Fawn. Now I could have cut these apart, but there's nothing outside of the apple that I need to preserve. So I just left those two dies in place, put a little piece of Scotch Blue removable tape onto my die in the paper, and then ran that through the prism. Isn't this an adorable little apple? I brought in a scrap of red pattern paper along with my little banner punch and I punched out a small red accent piece for my focal point. To adhere my focal point to my card front, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape. This is the 3 quarter inch wide tape and that is how I'm going to adhere it to the card front. You'll notice that once I pull the release paper and adhere that to the card front, I do put it so it's a little slanted. This card today is inspired by an Instagrammer who if you see one of her cards, you know it is her. I'll put a screenshot up here just quickly of some of the cards she's made and I will link her Instagram account below if you want to go check her out. Once I had my little pattern paper flag in place, I brought in some Stampin' Up! dimensionals and added one to the back of the die cut apple. This just got placed so it was sitting next to the basket. I wanted to add some highlights to my apples to finish the card off. So I brought in my Uniball Signo white gel pen and I added just a little kind of moon shape to the top of the apples where I thought the highlight might be. Every once in a while it seemed like my pen was picking up some of the red ink from the apple. So that is why I have that scrap off there to the right to just wipe that off. So when I come back in, it is nice and white and bright again. Here is a close up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I created this cute and easy card today using the Arteza Real Brush Pens. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.